Diego, greetings. Yeah, today, the 13th of December, to the year 2021, we mark the end of an era. Mr. Alan Donovan, a person who was instrumental in a lot of stuff in preserving our culture. So, Mr. Alan Donovan died in his sleep, peacefully. As we all know, he was an icon, the biggest icon of African culture, fashion, and he was also a designer. My name is uh, Jose Mutise Mutiso. I came from Makueni. I started working with Alan in 1993, up to today, 2021. Oh, I'm Sham Shadow Colero. I'm going to talk about my name is Zach, that's the name which is known here, but full name is Adekai Usimi. So I came here the year 2003. I've been here working with Alan, Alan. What I can just say, Alan, Alan is a good man. I'm, I'm in Tolodondi. Uh, I'm coming from Kisumu country.
he got rations because my grandmother was Arab So, yeah, so I Munan's mom was
Anybody who is not one of the pallbearers, we'd ask you to come and sit down and we can start the procession. Thank you.
As you've been told, I'm a, a, an artist uh, based in Uganda. Uh, um, I met Alan in 1971 in Mombasa, um, and since then we closely worked together until the Sunday, very early morning, when I received uh, an email from him before he passed on. I'm greatly honored to be reading words written by. Margarita Wagacheri, a dear friend of uh, Alan, and um, a, a, a great Pan-African, a wonderful human being. His contribution will live on uh, for generations to come, nourishing us all and inspiring us, especially the young generation. Um, Alan, had an affinity to Africa, for Africa long before he established Pan -Afri African Heritage House in, or African Heritage Pan African Gallery with Kenya's second vice president, the late Joseph Murumbi, back in 1971. Even before he did double major in African art and journalism at UCLA, uh, he had grown up on a ranch in Colorado reading about the continent in his family's National Geographic magazines. He once described how he used to create scratch, scrapbooks filled with all kinds of African animals as if he did already foreseen at an early age that his future life would somehow be connected with Africa. How appropriate then that he wished to be buried right next door to the National Park, Nairobi National Park, a place he used to watch from his balcony. Um, whole hearts of wildebeests and zebras roaming the land, unlike today where the trains cut across the wildlife from uh, stomping grounds and hearts are rarely ever seen. But in life of his early fascination for Africa, it's no surprise that soon after earning a master's degree, Alan applied for the U.S. State Department job that took him to West Africa, where he served as a relief worker in the war torn Nigeria. That was in 1967. After six months in a coma, he miraculously regained consciousness to the relief of his friends and he seemed to come back stronger than ever. And just as prone to planning new projects, he did be in a hurry to complete. Many of them are still pending. But back in 1968, Alan decided to quit his government job. He claimed it was his way of protesting the election of a president he believed was a warmonger. Before he left Nigeria, he made his way to Oshoko, where he met artists like Twin77 and his younger wife, Nikki. He also met Muraini Oyelami, the first African artist whose work he liked enough to buy. Three of Murayami's uh, paintings are going to cover, were going to cover one great wall that Alan had planned to be in the Morumbi Pan-African Research Center, which is one of his pending projects, which he renamed Urusi Memorial House. The privilege, I, I've said all I need to say, actually, in the eulogy, 
but I would like to say that I know Alan would be really pleased that all of you are here today, and I want to congratulate this committee for organizing this event. Uh, I want you all to take note of the are that are on his casket, because those are from Madagascar, and that was where he had his first cultural festival, and those silk Malagasy drapes are what they put on funerals in Madagascar. So it was very thoughtful and timely, and I'm just grateful to be here, and I think all of you have your own memories, and I do too, and I don't have too much to say, but to thank him for a beautiful life and the love of Africa. Thank you, Margareta. Thank you. Khadija Da, Khadija Da is here. Khadija, how are you? Oh, sorry. Alan was my friend. To call somebody a friend is, is, is very, very um, deep. You know, you, uh, a friend is somebody who you can call on. He was, um, he was kind, he was giving, he was loving, and he was very, 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 very polite person when he liked you. My name is Osman Manin. I first met Alan about 51 years ago in the dusty town of Moyale, where my former teacher in Wajia gave him a photo of me. So upon arrival in Moyale, he asked people to look for me. We met him and he asked me to deliver two bags of Moran artifacts that he bought on his trips as he was going to Turkana. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, CS and thanks for coming. Joy. My name is Tom Otieno. I'm a co-director at the African Heritage House. And Alan was like my father, my mentor, my confidant, someone I would count on. I met Alan 27 years ago when I was employed by African Heritage, the then African Heritage. Ambassador Amina Mohammed, friends of African Heritage. Good afternoon. I don't have much to say. All I wanted to say is that I want to celebrate Alan Donovan. I met Alan Donovan when I was quite young at my mom's friend's salon where he used to cut his hair. Um, he asked Daniela um, to call me and I went to him and he just gave me a glance like this, so unimpressed. And he goes, um, come to Libra House on Wednesday. I went to Libra House. He had a show that was coming up. Um, didn't give me much information. Um, OJ was there. I was told to, to appear for a show. Um, I was a bit confused. I went back. Daniel asked me, what did he say? I said, I don't think I'm in. He didn't say much. He's a man of few words. He didn't look impressed. Um, the clothes were a bit too big for me. I was quite small then. I wasn't this big. And um, I did the first show. After the first show, uh, the papers came out, and I saw the next thing, I was the head model. And after that, Alan um, always found a way of elevating me, bait, making me a, um, a head model. Every time there was any international magazines coming through, he would call upon me to participate. Um, even after I retired, he, he would still call upon me to do something. And I always wondered, I said, Alan is a special person. I actually call him a legend. Reason being that I c couldn't imagine myself going to another part of the world, living in, the, in, the, in a culture that I don't understand, learning their culture, loving their culture more than the people, and actually coming out on top. 
I, I have said this before, I don't think Alan got the recognition he deserved. He loved this country. He loved everyone he met, especially um, the artists, musicians, the acrobats, the, uh, there's so many people, models, everybody who came uh, in contact with Alan and had a talent. He would always try and elevate you. And I hope that people get to know who he was and the love he had for this country and the love he had for, for, for the people he met. Um, Alan, thank you. Rest in peace. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, compared to so many of the people here, I would consider myself a, a new friend of Alan and his team. Um, of course, I grew up in Nairobi, going to African Heritage uh, Gallery uh, when Fayel was a model and sort of hanging out and seeing all the beautiful things there. Um, but really, it was only recently this year when I realized the house had been put on sale um, and came out here quite alarmed, um, thinking about the collection and all of his work, and began a process of, as the colleague from the museum said, being one of the recipients of three, four, five emails a day, um, thinking through with our foundation how to help him preserve um, what he's collected over the years. And he was very intent on us understanding not just the collection in the house. We did, we pulled together a sort of group, what we were calling a friends group or a brains trust of uh, Kenyan artists, of Kenyan academics, of artist collectives. And everyone jumped in without hesitation. It was just to give him some new brains, new ideas, new people to work with, and so on. And like I said, he was very intent on us understanding the full extent of the legacy. Uh, he organized a tour for us here. He organized a tour for us at the Murambi Peace Memorial. Saw the graves had all been cleaned up, including Pio Gamma Printo's grave. Um, took us all through the gallery at his age, like showing us around. And when we were in the gallery, a tour group came through and ended up joining our group and sort of listening to him sort of explain the collection. Went to the National Gallery, went to the Serena, and last Sunday, we were actually meant to go through the collection at Strathmore. Um, and Paul called me pretty early in the morning, and I thought it was about meeting for the tour. And you know, that was it. He was an extraordinary individual, um, very demanding, um, very keen on making sure that the legacy continued. Um, you know, for all who are worried about that, um, I've told the trustees already, we had a plan, we had a proposal, we had a budget. We knew what we wanted to do with each piece. So this will continue. It's so unfortunate um, that he won't be here to sort of see it carried through. But the commitment to the team is that, yes, when you call, we're here. Um, thank you all for coming. I feel so privileged um, that I did have the chance to get to know him a bit. He was extremely generous with his knowledge of material culture across Africa and of the first generation of uh, post-independence artists um, who he cared for so deeply. Madani, that has to be there, the fun, the fun for the artists. Um, anyway, so uh, just to say on behalf of the institution I work for, the Open Society Foundations, we will be part of making sure this carries forward. He will be greatly missed. Thank you, and thank you so much, Madani, for that assurance of the support. This tribute is from um, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga. And I read, Many times death comes as a surprise, especially in this part of the world. But the death of Alan Donovan, the co-founder of African Heritage, the continent's first Pan-African gallery, found me and all of us particularly unprepared. We all expected Alan to live a little longer and sell the greatness of Africa to the world for many more years. Alan proved to be, sorry, Alan proved to the world that you need not be black to be an African. Similarly, he proved that you need not be white to be British or American. Alan proved that we, are, we all need to believe in Kenyan, in the human race, and how intertwined our fate and future is. 
To champion African heritage, Allen built on African experiences all the way from Mali in West Africa to the Swahili coast of Eastern Africa. To these experiences, he brought in his, as a man from the West, who also understood the colonialism, what colonialism did and meant to Africans. In between, Allen became the best explainer of what Africa is, why Africa should matter to you, to humanity and what Africa can be to the human race in the centuries ahead. It took Allen, an American, to establish Africa's first Pan-African gallery with the late Joseph Murumbi, a former vice president of Kenya. Their decision to use the Nimba mask from Guinea as the company's logo confirmed the oneness of our people. For more than 40 years, Allen organized and curated exhibitions all around the world showcasing Africa's rich cultural legacy. That, in my view, was a service to the continent and, in my view, a service to humanity. Today, we see Allen off. I'm very convinced that Africa's founding, founding fathers like Namdi Akizwe, Kwame Nkrumah, Julius Nyerere, Sekuture, Jomo Kenyatta, Oginga Odinga, Abdel Nasser, and more recently, Nelson Mandela will embrace him in the next world. In Kenya, we remain deeply proud of the work he did here and put us at the center of the preservation of what Africa is and can be. As Alan departs, we can confirm to the elders who went ahead of him and all of us that he was and to all of us that he was a good man, that he did well for the black race and contributed immensely to creating understanding between the human race. Ours is to help preserve the tradition he started and make sure it does not die with him. African culture needs champions. I personally commit to help preserve what Alan and Joe started and committed their lives to. Fare thee well, Alan, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, EGH. Thank you. I would now like to call on our Cabinet Secretary, um, Dr. Mani Amina Mohammed, who was a great friend of Allen's and African heritage, to come and make her remarks. And I'd just like to recognize all the wonderful friends uh, that are here, uh, family and uh, uh, staff of uh, uh, African heritage over the years. Um, the models and all the artists that, uh, that are here. And I'm really glad that I was able to uh, come and join all of you in, in celebrating uh, Alan's amazing and really historic life. Um, I, I met him. Um, Fortunately for me, uh, when I was uh, first heading out to, uh, uh, to Geneva as, uh, as a very young officer, and I needed an African uh, art fair, and I had gone um, around the city and couldn't find anything, and somebody said, well, for Aussie, uh, because there is uh, an African heritage uh, you know, space that if you, I'm sure if you went through it, you'd find something wonderful too. With you. So the intention I think that Alan had uh, was to leave a legacy, a legacy, an African legacy. And I think that's what we need to do and we must do it uh, for all our souls so that we don't become known always as the lost souls of Africa. Thank you very, very much, Joy. Thank you.
Jebo, but this is the final resting place of Mr. Alan Donovan. Uh, he chose the spot for, you know, he himself chose the spot, right? He came and sat on the bench over there, said this is where I want it to be made. He looked around and said, no, cut all these branches. I don't want people to knock their heads when they're coming to see me. Then he called home. Well, Tom, I want this place to be swept. Tom was walking away to go get someone to do it, but he said, No, do it yourself. Then Tom did it. He again called Wamboa, which we were with together. Put a plug over there, knock it down, measure down three feet. This way, seven feet. That's my final resting place. And a pond beside it. There will be a fish from the water. After the house is completed. You see? Do a fish pond, a nice one, a small one. I don't need a big one, just a small one. But it has to be exactly like the one in front of my main house. That's the memorial place. You, he already printed the tree. Then he said, on Saturday, he told me he's be having a tour next week, which the final week he's gone. So he told me to make sure I finish everything before he have a tour. He went so soon before we finish it. But we had to finish it before his visitors come. Yeah, What's your name, man? I'm Okoth. Magic Okoth. He used to call me Magic Okoth. A man with a magic hand in carpentry. And the man with the magic hand in masonry is Wamboa, just beside you. Yeah, man. Uh, you heard it yourself from Okoth. Mr. Alan Donovan was so organized, he actually organized his own funeral. You can see with the events, how they were unfolding, this guy was organized. It seems like his soul was telling him it was about time, you know. So this is his resting place. And also we have Mr. Wambua here with us. Mr. Wambua, how do you know Mr. Alan Donovan? Since 1992. I was the mason for Alan Donovan, the one who made that house foundation. Since up to today, I'm working with Alan Donovan. Alan Donovan is a great man. And he tried me to tell me something good to be healthy. He needs me to be with him all the time, the last minute, and today. Yes, and this is the end of an era, but the spirit is still alive. African heritage spirit is still alive. Mr. Alan Donovan lived his life to the fullest. You know, dying at an age of 83 years old, that is a bonus. And he left behind a legacy, a legacy. And he also, I can say, he did this out of passion and also he did it for us. You know, preserving our culture and showing us to appreciate ourselves. You can imagine a white man came to Africa and he came here. I can tell you that from, for a fact, he changed my life. He showed me how to appreciate me more, and that is being African. There's no gap that Alan has left. It's up to us to continue with his legacy. He might be dead, but his spirit is still here. Rest in peace, Mr. Alan Donovan. And this is the African Connection. I'm your host, Mr. Justo Asikoi. Juice, Jabali, Africa. Peace.
כדאי